Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vloggy thing. This will be my follow-up video to the HTC Vive video I did a couple of days ago, the unboxing and first impression video. And it was very much a first impressions video that was truly my feelings for it when I you know, first started playing with it. That's exactly what I was thinking. Um, I was wrong about the headphones and I did put that up in an annotation. I was wrong about the headphones. It's the Oculus the Rift that's getting the fancy over-the-ear headphones. The Vive, I've heard nothing about their headphones. Um, basically, I, I still think that I'm right about the in-ear headphones. You, you know, lots of people are going to be wanting to play with this thing, and not a lot of people are going to have one, at least initially. So your friends are going to be wanting to play with it but they're not going to be wanting to play with the in-ear headphones. Seriously, ew. Especially after you've been working out on this thing. So let's start with the negative. So I've been using this for a couple of days now. I've been playing with it. I've been learning its you know, uh, uh, interface and stuff like that. Uh, I've been playing with mixed reality. I've shown it off to friends. So I, I've been diving pretty hard into the Vive and playing with it, so I think I have a significantly better idea now than I did before about what's going on with it. So let's start with the negatives. First thing, the concentric circles that I saw. Still noticeable, still catches me off guard every once in a great while, but it has to be in a very bright environment, like, say, the loading screen for the lab, you know, Valve's The Lab, uh, it's like primarily white. That's where it's noticeable. And it, it's a little off-putting, but the second it actually loads into the game, they're gone. So, you know, it strikes you as very off very, for a short amount of time. As long as your computer can load the game quickly. Mine kind of can't. Um, okay, that one can, but the laptop I've been using it on can't. Um... Second thing, the streaking. Again, only noticeable when it's a very dark background and a very light foreground. So I've noticed it in a grand spanking total of two places. One, the Vive Home, where the default desktop is this landscape at night. So you get stars, you get the earth up here, and you get the moon up here. And the moon and the earth are very, very bright, and the background is very, very dark because it's space and you get streaking, and it's kind of weird. But I'm used to it, because usually when I see that kind of streaking, I need to clean my glasses. So every now and then I'll be playing, um, and then I'll see that, and I'm like, I need to clean my glasses. Oh wait, it's the Vive, it's not my glasses. And the second place I saw it was in the game Audio Shield. Now, by its very nature, it has to have a very dark background and has very bright foreground. It has to, that's how the game is played. And uh, the streaking is noticeable there too. It's the only game so far I've seen that has the streaking in it, but I could ignore it. It's noticeable and it's a little distracting every once in a great while, but for the most part I can ignore it. It's not really a problem. Um, what else do we have? We have the lighthouses. There is a very interesting downside to these things. Now, they say, what did they say? Uh, has to be at least six foot five feet off the ground or something like that. Uh, six and a half feet off the ground. That depends on how tall you are. Okay? I'm six foot four. I need to have the lighthouses further off the ground because they talk to each other. I don't have a clue how, but they sync with each other. And they do it via line of sight. So if you have the lighthouses low and you walk in between them, they lose their sync and you lose your tracking. And it's really weird that they do that, but I don't understand it. I would I'm going to assume that it's because they use the laser. You know, this one sees that one's laser 
and that one sees this one's laser, and that's how they know when they need to sync up. Um, and if they can't see the other laser, then obviously it doesn't work. So that's why it has to be up high over whatever it is that's in the play area. But it also can't be tilted too far down. Now, of course, they were nice enough to provide a workaround for that. That was the giant-ass headphone cable, which, for the record, I have used with my headphones, and it does work, so I could probably plug my headphones into my gaming rig here, put on music, and walk the entire way to the other side of my house and still have the headphones on. Um, <laughs> I still think that's funny, and I love that they did that, but uh, you'll probably use that. Now... There's also problems with tracking, just in general. And it's a little weird. Uh, every now and then, I'll turn in just the right direction, and one of the controllers will just go out here. And yesterday, yo, oh, yesterday it was terrible. I had one controller that was over here, but my hand was here. And it wouldn't come back. Every time I moved it this way, it would go this way. And it matched my movements one-to-one, -one, but it was over here. And I was holding the controller side by side in reality, but one controller was like out like this. And it was really annoying. And I sat there and I waited for it to track and I moved around to make sure it was in line of sight with both lighthouses and it wouldn't come back. And it stayed that way for like two minutes. It was really weird and kind of annoying. Um, every now and then I will straight up lose tracking. Like the tracking will just disappear and the controller will vanish from my hand. And then I have to turn around and make sure that it's lined up with one of the lighthouses so it can see it again. And then I have to wait several seconds for it to come back. That's kind of annoying. Um, every once in a great while, the headset will lurch. So it's like the entire world will decide to go that way. And it is really disorienting. Actually, it makes me kind of sick, but it will just lurch that way. Now... Something that confuses me about the lighthouses. From my understanding, there are two lighthouses for occlusion issues. So you can run the games off of one lighthouse, but the second you turn away from the lighthouse, you would lose tracking because you would be blocking the line of sight with your body. That's why there are two lighthouses in opposite corners so that you can't turn around and block you know, both lighthouses everything is seen by at least one lighthouse. I've been pointed at one of the lighthouses when the entire world lurches and I lose tracking. That is the weirdest bloody thing. And so it, it's it's early technology, it's not perfect, and it's probably not going to be perfect for a couple iterations. Uh, two or three iterations, probably. And... Let's think, is there anything else I can complain about? That's pretty much all the negatives. We got uh, the, ooh, the screen door effect. Okay, so the screen door effect is there. It is noticeable, but the second you start paying attention to the game and not the screen, poof, disappears. You totally don't see it. However, the pixel density isn't high enough to properly see several things. Like uh, the Steam interface has a desktop mode, so you can see your desktop and actually interact with your desktop while still in VR. So it's like virtual desktop, but with... Uh, wait, did they rename that to VR desktop? I think they might have. But uh, it's like being in VR desktop, but you know, very flat. Okay, not curved or anything like that around the uh, around the sphere. It's very flat, and you cannot see detail with the VR setup. However, if you have room scale set up, you can walk towards the desktop. So it'll start out like here, and you can walk towards it, and it'll be this big, giant thing that you have to look around. So it's this huge, huge freaking screen, but you can see detail again. Okay. So there are workarounds for a lot of the problems that are arising with this thing, but it's still workarounds that you have to do. 
Give it time, it'll probably get better. All right, so let's talk about the positives of this thing. Actually, now that I think about it, I do have one more negative. I have fiddled with the strap a lot and I cannot get this thing to sit on my head properly. It drops a lot, so I have to readjust a lot. I'm, always, I'm constantly pushing them up. Um, I've readjusted all three straps many times. I've gotten it as close as I can where it will only slide down a little bit, but if it slides down even a little bit, you get one of those ridges in the lens right in front of your field of view. So you have to shove it up so you can actually see clearly again. Uh, which is going to be entertaining when I show this thing off because of course you're gonna have to readjust the head strap every t for every new person. And I don't know how to do that yet. I don't know exactly what I need to look for. I can do it with the Oculus. I wonder why I can't do it with the Vive. I mean, it's the same thing. It's just over the top and two sides, it's easy. I don't know why it's such a problem for me. Hmm. Yeah. Anyways. Um, all right. Is that it for problems? I think that's it for problems that I have seen. I have not played with the Tron mode of the Chaperon, Chaperon system yet. Um, in fact, I've kind of only used the camera once, and that's when I accidentally pointed OBS at it. So you can access this camera directly from third-party software. OBS sees it as just a USB camera. Same with the microphone. I think that's that little tiny dot right there. Uh, you can access the microphone through Audacity. I kind of accidentally clicked it and I'm turning up the gain on my Blue Yeti here. And I'm wondering why nothing's happening. Every time I'm, I'm turning up the gain, I'm like, the gain's the whole way up and I'm not seeing any action on Audacity. I'm like, what the hell's going on? And I realized that it's going from this mic, not that one. Definitely interesting stuff. Um, but yeah, I haven't played with them yet. I haven't attached this to my phone yet, primarily because I'm a little iffy about attaching a Valve device and an H. Well, I guess I shouldn't be too concerned about HTC considering they made my last phone, but I'm a little concerned, probably ranging on paranoid, about giving Valve direct access to the device where I hold all of my contacts and most of my personal information. Um, so no, I haven't done that yet. Probably will eventually because like I said, it's just paranoia and it would be stupid for Valve to do anything with them with that information. And it's probably just a basic Bluetooth headset with a fancy interface. That's probably all it is. But uh, yeah, that's just paranoia being its thing. Um, you know, now that I think about it, uh, there's supposed to be a sensor in there when you put this thing on, it's supposed to know that it, you've put it on your head. Is that supposed to be there or is that another thing that I'm mixing up with the Rift? There's a like shiny reflective piece that looks like some kind of sensor, or at least it looks like it could be some kind of sensor. Um, I've never had this headset turn off, not once. You know, I open up Steam VR mode on the computer before turning on the headset, headset turns on. Never once had it turn off. So it's constantly running. I have to close out of Steam VR to get it to turn off. Yeah, so interesting stuff. Uh, but the good things, one of the really good things is that it is what the Wii promised it was, okay? So you know how the Wii was always talking, you know, we had Wii Fit and all that fun stuff, the Wii Balance Board and all that crap, and it was all about the, you know, getting fit and getting in shape and all that fun stuff. And then you give it to a kid who you want to move around more instead of sitting there just not moving and that's all they're doing. They're just move, They're pushing buttons on a controller and that's it. So you get them the Wii Mote thinking that they'll be like up and about and doing the thing. Uh, and it just turned out that that's all they're doing. They're just waggling the remote. The Vive 
well, the, the, the primary reason that the Wii failed at what it was trying to do is because it wasn't tracking one-to-one. Even when you got that uh, extra little bit to stick on the back of the Wiimote that was supposed to track one-to-one, it totally didn't. The most you had to do was literally just like this. You didn't really have to do anything to get the Wiimote to activate. So it's, it's the natural instinct for humans to go with the least amount of effort. And I know what a lot of people are saying, but I do this and it's totally not the least amount of effort. I said natural instinct. People naturally gravitate towards the less strenuous action. That's actually nature in general. Nature, physics in general, will gravitate towards the least amount of action possible. Like uh, uh, Newton's laws, uh, an object at rest will remain at rest. Well, you have to add force to it to get it to move. Well, if it's at rest, it's not going to add force itself. It has to have an external source. So naturally, everything goes towards the least amount of effort. And humans do it as well. So if all you, if all you have to do is move a quarter of an inch one way or the other to use the Wiimote, that's what people are going to do. And, bonus on that top of that, if moving it a quarter of an inch does exactly the same thing as doing a full swing, then there is no point in doing the full swing. Just do this and you're fine. Well, the Vive is one-to-one -one tracking, and it does encourage full movement. Like the game that I've been talking about, Audio Shield. Fun game. Um, the idea is that you have these balls flying at you, and you have to block them with colored shields. So you have blue balls, and you have orange balls, and you have an orange shield, and you have a blue shield, and you've got to uh, block the orange ones with the orange shield and blue ones with the blue ones, and then put them together to make purple to block the purple. And now you can just sit there and just do this, and stuff like that, but it actually scores you based on movement. Uh, there's all kinds of stats at the end where you have um, how hard you punch, how much movement you do, and it all scores you based on that. And there are leaderboards and everything like that, so it's actually encouraging you to get into the game and actually move around. The, the the joke that's been online since, you know, the Vive first announced that it was going to be a room scale thing where in the future the gamers are going to be the fit ones. I can see that happening. Now, they're not going to be bodybuilders or anything like that, but they're going to be in shape. I mean, I already feel a little bit thinner and I've only been playing with this a couple of days. And I can definitely see it because I want to play these games... And then the next day, my arms are sore, my legs are sore, and I've been exercising, and it gets my heart rate up. It's, it works. It does what everybody thought it was going to do, and it does it way the hell better than the Wii ever did. Believe me, I have both. I have the Wii, the Wii U. In fact, I noticed that the Wii U, you kind of, don't play with the Wii Mote anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, the that kind of died. The Kinect was an interesting idea, but I never had follow through with it. And the PlayStation Motion, same thing. Interesting idea, not a lot of follow through. I guess we'll see how the Vive follows through because the whole natural propensity to gravitate towards the least effort might also continue with that and they just and people just won't play the high effort games they'll just play the seated seated experiences like the racing games and stuff like that i don't know i guess we'll see but uh i know it's going to help me because i actually want to play these games <laughs> and i find myself mildly disappointed that i wear out quickly and i can't continue playing these games <laughs> uh I've also noticed that I am overheating. Seriously. I get this thing and suddenly the weather outside decides to go from, you know, 30 degrees to 70 degrees. 
So now it's just too damn hot and I've got studio lights going and of course we have the uh, headset with its foam and its enclosed environment and uh, it's just hot and sweaty and it's, yeah. <laughs> Remind me to disinfect that thing, seriously. Um, what else do we have good? We have a few good games, a few fun games. We have, uh, let's see, let's go through my list. We have Audio Shield, which I love the hell out of. Great little game you can put in your own music. Okay, so it starts out, you have this list of music that it comes with, I think, or it's on the internet. I'm actually not 100% sure how that works. I should probably disconnect it from the internet and find out. Hmm. But you can put in your own music, like there's there's the music here that you can, that came preloaded, and then over here is a, like, a, a file explorer. So you can click through your directories to find your music, and your music, your own music will pop up here. Which is great, because that means maybe if I can figure out exactly how I want to do it, I can show off the game with music that I have rights to use. But I will tell you this, very first song I tried was Dragon Force Through the Fire and Flames. I'm like, I'm looking through the list and the list isn't very expansive. There isn't a lot on there. Uh, a couple anime songs, uh, Tron, um, I forget the name of that band. I can hear it in my head, but I can't remember the name of the band. Something Gorillas. Eh, whatever. Um, but it, it, yeah, it's just anime songs. We got Star Wars. We have a few real songs. Um, and I'm sitting there looking through the list and I see Through the Fire and Flames. So I'm like, you know what? I got to try this. And it's the very first song I tried. Whoo, damn. That's a long song. When you're standing there and you're punching things, it is a long song, but it's fun. I enjoy it. Um, let's see. Budget cuts. Uh, the, it's still the demo phase. It's a fun game, entertaining. Interesting use of VR. Um, might have to look into that one a little bit deeper. We have the Cloudlands VR Golf, which I think I mentioned before. I either mentioned it in this video or the one that I recorded uh, before this video that I chucked because I didn't say everything that I wanted to say. I forget. But uh, VR mini golf is literally that. You have one controller and it's pop-up golf. You know, mini golf. And it annoys the shit out of me. Some of the, you know, holes in, in, in VR mini golf are just asinine. Just ridiculously hard. Um, when it's a par 18 you might have a hole that's a little too difficult. You might want to rethink that. Uh, let's see, Fantastic Contraption. It's an interesting, slow-paced puzzle game. I like it. It's interesting. Uh, Hover Junkers, I haven't played with it yet. I really, really should. You know, I kind of backed them on Indiegogo. Yeah, I backed them on Indiegogo. Um, I really should play that game. Uh, Incel, I haven't played on the Vive yet. Job Simulator, that's an entertaining game. A weird game, but an entertaining game. Uh, the Lab, great little demo, great little example of what VR can do. And I haven't played with Surgeon Simulator VR Meet the Medic yet. Um, isn't there like a full version of Surgeon Simulator for VR? I haven't seen it. But I could have sworn there was a full version of Surgeon Simulator for VR, but it was separate from the version of Surgeon Simulator that I already have. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. But that's pretty much all I have on my list so far. Um, I haven't really dived outside of Steam yet for other Vive games. I've been meaning to. Um, one thing I have been playing with a lot recently, actually the past, like, three days, is mixed reality recording, okay? So if you've seen the Valve commercial for the Vive, where there's a bunch of people in a green screen studio, and it starts out, we got a bunch of people on the couch, 
and there's a guy in the headset and he's got one controller in his hand and the guy behind the camera throws him the other controller and while the headset's still on his head he reaches out he grabs the controller in midair and it flashes so that you see him in the environment that he's seeing in the headset and we started you know i was watching i'm like that's really awesome I want to do VR videos that way. And then I started paying attention to the video and I started seeing little details that just made it absolutely amazing to me. Um, so it wasn't noticeable right off the bat, but right when there was the one woman who was on like a sunken ship and there was a uh, whale behind her, I noticed there were fish swimming in front of her. And I'm like, Ooh, that's interesting. I wonder how they do that. Because we have green screen behind her, but we've got something swimming in front of her in real time. And I looked into it, and it's really interesting how it's done. It's uh, part of the Unity plugin for Steam VR. Uh, so it has to be a Unity game, and you have to do you have to jump through a few hoops. But you get a full screen window that has four quadrants in it. And you have one quadrant is the background, one quadrant is the foreground, one quadrant is what the uh, person is seeing, and one quadrant apparently is a mask, which I'm assuming is for more fancy software than what I'm using. Uh, and then basically what you do is you use... Uh, you know, a, a capture device, a capture card. And then you attach a one of the Vive controllers, specifically a third Vive controller, so you have to plug it in via USB, to a camera. And then you set the offset. And it's a very fiddly process. I sat there and worked with it for about an hour and a half, two hours yesterday, trying to get it to line up right, and I couldn't. Um, I think it would help if I had two people but I just had me and it also doesn't help that rotating on the X, uh, Y and Z axis confuses the hell out of me to say the least. It confuses me. Um, but after you do all of this thing, you put it into compositing, compositing software. You have two layers of, uh, chroma keys so you have the green screen, so that's one chroma key, and then you have the foreground, which has to have a transparent background in the foreground, so you have a chroma key on that, and then you layer all three of those layers together, and suddenly you have mixed reality video. And holy shit, is it fiddly business. But it can be done. And uh, conveniently, we have a computer powerful enough to do it all in one. Because from what I can tell, if we try to play the game on one and output the four quadrant thing and then composite on another PC, we would have to have two capture cards, one for the output from the first PC and one for the output from the camera. Ugh. Uh, it, it's insanely complicated. And honestly, after I fiddled with it for several days, I kind of burned myself out from it. And I'm taking a break from it today. <laughs> but I see a lot of potential in the Vive. I see a lot of potential in VR in general, and I really hope it takes off. Um, I want to be able to compare this to the Rift because supposedly the... Yeah, Rift. Uh, supposedly the Rift is a better headset... But of course, the Vive has room scale. I, I really want to compare, and I'm trying to keep that particular bit of information out of my opinion. Uh, but I, what I fear is that because I have the Vive so much sooner that I'm going to have the Rift, they're still having problems with shipping, and I'm still probably a week or two out from even getting my processing email. And I can't even guarantee that. It might be well into next month before I even get that, uh, depending on if they ever actually fix their shipping issue. I don't know. 
Um, but the reason that I wanted them both to arrive so close together um, is because I didn't want to get fully into testing one of them before I play with the other one. Because if I get into the nitty gritty of one of them, I will have a better understanding of that one and I will forever be comparing the other one to that one. And it may always seem inferior because of a natural bias. Now, when I get my rift, I'm going to try my damnedest to avoid that, but I can't promise that I can. So, yeah. Hopefully, I remember to put that little disclaimer before I put up the rift video that uh, I may have a bias and I'm going to try to ignore it, but I may have a bias towards the Vive because of what I am experiencing and what I'm going to experience in the Vive. Uh, so far, I have played with it for several days. Enjoy the hell out of it. I have shown it to friends up in New Kensington uh, in a big room scale environment, not huge room scale, just big enough to be proper room scale. Um, they loved it, by the way. They just were floored at how good it was. Um, I actually had one of my friends, he's like, oh, so if I buy this, I can say it's for health reasons, or at least I can justify it to myself that it's for health reasons. I'm like, yes, yes, you can. <laughs> if you really want to, you can. Um, but uh, at the end of the month, on the 30th, we are going to be in New Kensington Putting on this, putting on a display for the New Kensington Better Block. Our museum is putting up a an exhibit up there for the Better Block, um, and I'm not 100% sure what all we're going to have there. The only thing I'm sure that we're going to have there right now is a console exhibit. So first generation, second generation, up through the fifth generation, I'm going to have. A very popular console from that generation and an also ran console from that generation and that and they're going to be active displays so you'd be able to play the games and all that fun stuff and that is going i know that's going to happen um and we might be putting on a vr display as well but not just a vr display where you walk in you put on the headset and you play around with it for a little bit but where the people that are watching you play with it can see the mixed reality on a screen. And that's why I'm fiddling with mixed reality. And I plan on recording in mixed reality if we can figure out how to do it. And if I can get enough, you know, a green screen in here with enough lighting and all that fun stuff. Because I will tell you, doing it on a white wall, well, an off-white wall that's kind of almost flesh-colored... Um, doesn't work very well as a green screen because it makes your skin disappear. So I'm going to end up the episode here because I've probably been talking for about half an hour straight. My throat kind of hurts. And I'm going to say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game and have fun.